Hello, everybody. I am Jen Berryhill, and I am here on our second episode of Moons of Ascension. Um, that is just um, really anchoring in some amazing new information, tying in the star knowledge teachings. And um, I'm just so honored to be sitting here with a really, really amazing woman who also is a dedicated star knowledge ambassador who um, just shines and glows and embodies such tremendous light and strength in this world. And I call her my mermaid sister, which is perfect for today because today we're gonna to be talking about the whale moon in the third dimensional walk of this star knowledge calendar. So today's really gonna be about um, bringing in a little bit of information for you to have an awareness of what's going on with this moon cycle that we're about to embark on with the new moon coming in on the 31st of January in 2022. Um, and also just kind of relating it to kind of what's going on in the world right now um, and to bring in some tools and to help you if you know you're um, finding yourself in some places where you need to grow or you're feeling challenged. Um, and so Michelle Anderson is here with me today. She's anchoring in Love and Light on the West Coast of California on the Pacific Ocean. I'm here in Denver, Colorado in the Rocky Mountain area, um, the land of the elk. And <laughs> um, I'm just really excited to be here with you today, Michelle. So welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me I'm, and for your patience with everything I have going on. I just feel so honored to be here and to drop in with you and to do this. This is in a really important time on earth. It is. Yeah. yeah, so I figured what we could do is, um, you know, I could just share a little bit about um, why I started this and, and sort of the purpose and, and what these symbols are that we're talking about. Um, so um, in 2010, I was introduced to the Star Knowledge Conference with um, Chief Golden Light Eagle, who has been bringing forth these conferences since 1996 and talking with us about the universal and spiritual laws of creation. And during these conferences, he'd bring in, you know, teachers from all walks of life, all indigenous cultures, um, to share about prophecy and to, you know, share about um, ascension and healing and, um, you know, just what, so many amazing topics that oftentimes relate to connection with our star relatives and um, you know having a lot of experiencers come on as well and share about their experiences um, working with star people and so um, i was so inspired by the the teachings and and working with the book which is the symbols um, which are the universal and spiritual laws of creation which really really helped me in my ascension and quickly accelerated my spiritual path and then I was lucky enough to become a um, Star Knowledge event coordinator with Chief. Um, I started doing those in 2014. And then Michelle Anderson came on board with me um, around 2016 when we had our Estes Park August conference. And so her and I have been working together to develop um, events and conferences together since that time. And you know, we, we've, we've been in this conversation of having this event called the Galactic Goddess Gathering. And then as things unfolded in 2020, um, her, her and I, you know, were, we had to let go of our event that we were planning to have in Laguna Beach on 4-4-2020. Um, but that energy really still stayed alive. And then I wanted to continue in that, the energy of that divine goddess, the Galactic Goddess, um, to, um, you know, just keep it anchored so that we can keep the movement going forward in this age of Aquarius. So I've been doing these Galactic Goddess Zoom calls every month, and this has now translated into becoming this channel um, so that we can have just a bigger reach and um, to be able to share and have speakers come on and, and offer in their gifts and wisdom as well. So to give you a little bit more about what these symbols are. So these, these star laws and the symbols, um, they're the universal laws and the spiritual laws that came into existence through the thought of creator in the creation of the universe as you would know them. And star laws are encoding. You know, these laws are memory and encoding that is within the energies of mother earth. 
the energies within your physical body and the energies of the realms that are beyond the beyond the beyond beyond your understanding and beyond all things is where you will find the beginnings of these laws as you would understand them to be symbols as well. And they're designed for all not to forget where their dawning of existence began. Each of these laws are appearing now and becoming ever so present in the mind's eye, as well as in the, your physical realm. And your realm is to awaken and help you to remember. Each of these laws are significant and they have been carried down through the ages. So these symbols, they're not religious as it were, but they're connected or related to the dog. They're not co connected to dogmatic terms or churches. Um, these laws are actually hidden away so that you would not forget that you are free beings, that you are connected to all things, that you are, that you simply are, and you're a part of the I am presence. You are these laws, you are light. So each of these laws vibrates to a rhythm of light, and they're forms of energy that carry laws that were set during and at the beginning of creation. And they were designed to create balance, to create harmony among all things. And these laws not only affect those of earth, they are laws that are very enigm enigmatic amongst those of the other universes as well. So that's why these are the universal and spiritual laws of creation. So they've been around for eons, you know, since the dawning of time, in my opinion, you know, so, you know, they're, they're within us. So not one person is the owner or carrier of these codes because we all are. And my mission yes. is to help, you know, bring these forward as a way to help you remember your aspect of what you're carrying, because as we begin to have conversations like we are today, we start to unlock clues and keys within each other that help us to amplify that remembrance and really kick, kick off and, and uplift and activate the remembrance that creates this ascension movement that we're having. Okay, so that's a little bit of the background. And then I will go ahead and just kind of lead into what's happening starting on the 31st, because this is the new moon coming in. And it is the new moon of the whale moon. And with every moon, there's, with the new moon, a new stargate opens. And these are keys. These are kind of like virtues that can assist us in our awakening. So we have 13 gates. Oh. Can I, can I just interrupt for one second? Yeah. <laughs> what I, what I'd like to do as we move into this for, for anybody who's watching, knowing that we're in this great portal of time, this new moon energy, the whale moon, if we can ask anyone who's listening to do a three breath meditation to open our hearts, to receive this information in a very open hearted space. We know that, you know, there's a lot of uh, chaotic energies that are playing on earth right now. So what this does, Brian Busco gave me this really quick three breath, you can call it a meditation. So what I'd like to do is just invite our audience to step in this, in this place with us by first visualizing your physical heart, visualizing that spark of light that connects you to source in your heart. And with the first breath, breathing up, picture the mother earth energy coming up through your feet and, and rising within you and meeting your heart spark energy. And with the second breath, if we can imagine and visualize the energy from the sun, from creation, from source coming down through our crown chakra through our throat chakra, through our third eye chakra, and then our, our throat chakra, coming all the way down and meeting that energy in our hearts. And now on this third big breath, breathing in and visualizing all three of those energies merging within your physical heart, mother earth, creator, merging with your spark of light so that we are aligned with the all that is in an open-hearted space to share with all life in every realm and dimension. 
Thank you. Thank you. Now we're back grounded with our open hearts. And it's so perfect because we're tying in the sun, we're tying in the earth, and we're tying in the moon. And this is how we create balance. And we're in a, in a time of really needing to rebalance and reharmonize. So thank you. And what a great you know, tool just to have that takes less than five minutes to rebalance and center and arrive. So thank you for building that space for us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for letting me do that. Yeah. I'm doing it now. He taught me that I'm doing it now before I go in any phone call, you know, when you're out in the world and you're feeling the crunchy energies, it just, it just takes a minute, three breaths. Yeah. Three breaths. Mm -hmm. So moving from three, let's talk about 13 because 13 is a really, really powerful number. And 13 is what we're reclaiming as our moon walk. So it's actually a 13 moon calendar versus a 12 moon calendar. And it's important because 13 really represents the age of the feminine. So we're bringing back in the moon that is tied to healing and the astrological symbol of Ophiuchus. I just got a little notice on my screen that said my internet connection is a little unstable. So hopefully um, we'll be able to keep our connection stable as well. <laughs> That energy flowing. Oh. Okay, so with a moon cycle, so starting with the new moon, we're opening a stargate. And this the stargate is actually a key. And these keys you can consider to be more like virtues. So the key and stargate for this month of the whale moon, which is the third dimensional moon cycle, is knowledge. So we're opening up the stargate of knowledge with the whale people. And so there are 13 guests, gate, I'm sorry, the 13 gates that come with 13 tests that work with 13 moons and 13 tones and 13 star DNA activations, which help us ascend to the 13th frequency, which is love. So I'm gonna share a little bit about um, the energy of knowledge. And Knowledge really is, it's just a really very beautiful gift because it keeps you alive and it protects your family. It's a gift to know something and how you use it really determines the outcome of your everyday life. So most of your knowledge is a knowing, which means it doesn't need words. So true knowledge is the inner knowledge and that is what is called a knowing. And that's what we're moving toward in our ascension because it goes into the way called telepathy. And this is the path of light that we need to work towards because knowledge becoming knowing, becoming telepathy becomes our language of light, which is the language of love. And so it's to walk what you know, which is similar to being in integrity and having respect and honoring free will. So I just want to toss that over to you I, I, and see what comes in for you. Yeah. I love that that is the first point that you're going to, that you're talking about, because I think I just talked about this on, on our radio, awakening code radio program is that telepathy is the first language and what we're remembering right now is, and we're bringing this back. I, I notice it in my own life that telepathic transmissions are coming through. Anytime I've ever had contact with star beings, their mouths never moved. It was always through a telepathic message and it always has been. Um, and I asked this question. I can't remember if it was on our radio program or some, you know, maybe talk I was doing with someone, but one of the things I asked was, how would we be if we were all telepathic? How, how would we be any different, right? How many times have we had a conversation with somebody where they were saying one thing 
And yet here or in our gut, because we have a brain, we have a heart brain and a gut brain. And one of those brains said, this doesn't match what I'm getting in here. You know, oh, you're, thank you so much. But then over here, I'm feeling like that, why do I feel this weird energy coming here? So what that is, is discernment. There's a key inside of us that gives us discernment on how we navigate. And I also feel that sometimes when we're hearing this, but we're feeling something different, whoever's speaking before us isn't in right alignment, maybe in their own energy system. And I, I had this conversation with somebody the other day because she was really upset with, with, you know, somebody she was dealing with. And my question was, could you see that person that you're upset with as a nine-year-old little boy, a nine-year-old hurt little boy, because a nine-year-old hurt little boy or a five-year-old hurt little boy or whatever age person we're dealing with, boy, girl, they might have to say this and feel something different because they were hurt or violated or something happened and they're still dealing with that energy as an adult. So that's where instantaneous forgiveness comes in, but also using our discernment. So I think that's a really good key point to bring up right now is that as we navigate these times to not just listen with our ears, but to listen with our our brain, our heart, and our gut all in alignment as we move forward. That's a great tool. Yeah. And, you know, you're bringing up some good points because, you know, these, um, the Earth Star calendar, it starts with the Buffalo Moon. And that is the month of discernment. So we were like, the first thing we're doing when we start our year is really beefing up our ability to discern. And then the second moon is the grandfather's moon. And this is the moon of free will. You know, so we're learning how to be sovereign beings and really truly walk our walk, you know, walk our talk, being in integrity and having respect for ourselves and everybody and everything else. And then it leads us into this month with the whale, which is knowledge. And so one of the things I wanted to bring up was, you know, the whales, they bring us this awareness about our sacred responsibility and um, they bring us these um, teachings about the seven gifts that they remind us that we all have. And the first gift that they bring us is the gift of song. And the song, you know, it's a vibration. And, you know, our thoughts carry a vibration. So in an essence, our, our thoughts are a song. And it's also very important to know too, that sometimes silence is the best song. And so that's what made me think of what you just said, you know, this chattering, you know, it, it, it's like a mind chatter versus a heart chatter. And sometimes we, you know, if we can just take a moment and breathe and not even talk or think, you know, just be in our heart for a minute, that beefs up our, our uh, discernment. It helps us to honor and respect using free will. And then, you know, like that is truly walking the knowledge, <laughs> which is the knowing, you know, like we can just know versus understanding or, you know, contemplating or discussing or chatting. <laughs> um, so I want to giving our power to somebody, giving our power over to someone else other than ourselves when our own knowing is so powerful. Yes. So yeah. Thank you. yeah. And so, um, well, okay. So there are these seven gifts and I wanted to mention the song being one of them because, you know, the whales, they really want us to know that we can hear their song at all times. They're, they're always sharing their vibration with us. They are the code keepers of mother earth of the universe. And so, um, you know, one of the things that we learned is that, you know, because the whales are these code carriers, um, they're actually the ones that bring these symbols to us, the ones that we work with as the 1111 symbols. So the whales are swimming really at those really deep, deep depths within the ocean um, where these codes are being held and protected. And they are selecting codes that they are identifying as ones that we're ready to receive. So they will grab those codes and they will come to the surface and when they breach and they blow 
you know, they're, they're blowing these codes into the air. And those codes then connect with the sun and the sun activates the code for us to integrate. And so part of what we're doing when we're doing a sun dance ceremony is that we're praying to the sun and we're getting those codes and we're anchoring them back into mother earth. And then that becomes an integration for her, for her ascension and healing, as well as for humanity as well. So the whales are really playing a huge part in our ascension, um, you know, working with this way of knowledge, we're getting this activation from the sun, the whales are working with the sun right now, that is the, um, the star path is the sun with the whales. Um, and then the, it's activating our bones. And our bones are the the physical manifestation of our memories. So, you know, you can start to see like, wow, this is a really big month for us to really go big and start to, you know, remember more of who we are and what we're here to do. Um, so this is a huge month of evolution and ascension. And so, you know, just when you talk that, about this month, are you? Are you talking about the month of February that we're moving yes. into? Yes. Yeah. Yes. With this new the month, month, the two months. So I'm That's definitely right. talking about what's what's a, what's on deck for us this month. And so, two, yeah. you know what? You know, I talked about there's a test for every moon every month. So the test for this month is that karma greets us at the third gate, and this is about mm -hmm. clearing and forgiving before the judgments council and throne. So I wanted to bring that up because very often what I see during the month of February are a lot of people having like a absolute dark night of the soul. And it could very well be because you are clearing some major karma. And, you know, so a way to move through this this month is really work with that energy of forgiveness um, and, you know, call in your helpers, call in the whales, call in the Pleiadians, call in, um, sorry, Maitreya. Maitreya is the additional guardian that works with this symbol. And it's the universal law of movement and balance. That's the symbol. Mm -hmm. um, I can pull it up so you can see it. So this is the symbol of the universal law of movement and balance that comes to us this month with the whale nation. And so just even, you know, visualizing the symbol, um, drawing it in the air, drawing it on the ground. You know, I sometimes I'll use my finger and put it on a mirror or a window, but it's really important to draw a circle around it. And that's what actually activates the symbol. So this is just one more tool that, um, can help us this this coming month. Um, sorry, I was like, I don't. I'm kind of new at the Zoom thing. <laughs> you're doing great. I think you're doing great. Fantastic. Oh. What great information to bring through. This is a powerful month. What you're doing is you're helping me to understand why I've always been so drawn to do um, our dolphin boats. I've always been drawn to do it on two, two or two twenty two. Yeah, yeah. I, I have somebody asking me to do one on two twenty two twenty two, and I haven't done a dolphin, but I haven't been on the water with the dolphins and whales with a group since, um, 10, 10 of 19. I did go on two, two of 20 with my husband by on a small little boat. Um, and 21, I didn't go at all. So you're helping me to remember something that I think is one of the key components that the whales brought through for me. Um, the whales, you know, in the meditation that I lead before I do the dolphin boat, I talk about the whales being the wisdom keepers of our world. And you can feel when they're, when they come in, their presence is so vast. They're the largest creature. Blue whales are the largest life form on earth. And when you're in their presence, it's majestic. And it, it's, it's, there's, there's really, you've been on the dolphin boat, Jen. So you know what it feels like to be yeah. in that, in their, in their presence. It's like, it's amazing. And then, you know, being with the dolphins, they bring in the joy and the giddiness and the childlike wonder and all that. But the, the whales, whenever I feel the whales energy, I want to drop my shoulders and sit taller and just like pay attention so they definitely do that. 
Um, I, before we started on this call, I grabbed my um, symbols book that Chief Golden Light Eagle um, wrote and opened to the page. And you know that I was just flipping and it opened to the well people page. And I did not plan. I didn't know where it was in the book. I didn't plan that. That's one of the ways I kind of want to bring this up for anybody that might be listening that Eagle, man, it made me giggle. It made, he is so present in our lives from the other side that I, I just want to give great honor to this man who made, paved the way for so many of us to meet each other and merge our energies together. And one of the things that he always did was reminded us to be playful and he made us laugh constantly, even in the face of chaos and crunchiness, he always broke up that energy with laughter and his teachings were so powerful that they penetrated each one of us in different ways. You know, we're all different pieces of this puzzle, but would you mind if I read just a little bit? I don't, I don't feel like I have to read the whole, the whole two pages or three pages. Yeah, but... no, that would be great. And, you know, I wanted to also mention too, because one of the things that he would tell me, he's like, you know, the whales are my protectors because, um, you know, if you think about that laughter and joy, that, that in and of itself is a song too. And chief, you know, as many of us know, is this amazing musician and singer. And, um, so anytime he was doing his music, he was in his protection. Yes. And so that's another gift of that, you know, the song and the music. So thanks for that reminder too. I have goosebumps from head to toe about so many things that we're talking about right now. And I can just feel how important it is to be able to speak this and to be able to reach many people, not just here where we're both living, but around the world. And you know, I'm gearing up for Disclosure Fest, the music festival in June in California that's live with Trevor Hall headlining um, June 18th, when, you know, when we're in that summer solstice energy, integrating those codes that come from the sun. So all of this is tying into what I've been working on all week, getting our speakers and our yoga and our ecstatic dance and all, everything lined up for this in-person uh, festival in um, Los Angeles. But I would like to read, um, because the symbol is there, you see? Yep. <laughs> and that's the page that it opened to and I wasn't even looking for it. Did you know where it was in the book? Well, it's magic. It, it, it was so magic. So it says, um, the whale people heals emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual imbalances. We are the whale people here with you this evening. We are earth keepers fulfilling our duties as asked by creator. We are here to share some of those responsibilities that you share with us. For all imbalances are a result of failure to fulfill sacred responsibility. It is universal law that movement and balance must be one. Evolution is a delicate walk. On our great journeys through the ocean realms, we travel to many sacred power places. We allow our song, our thoughts, our feelings to harmonize with these chakra energies of Mother Earth. This gift and practice is within our DNA as it is within human DNA. In order to move forward in cosmic harmony, you must balance all of your activities. This means you must follow your spirit every moment. This very wisdom of spirit is anchored within your biology. Thus, follow your intuitions, express all of those things you consider silly, sing with Mother Earth, and dance when you feel it. Restore the power places upon the land, and then you won't feel so ridiculous when you dance a sacred dance in a mall, in a city, or sing a song in church that seems to be of, different, of a different persuasion. We well people change our world very little. We see the beauty and the sacredness that is already there. We seek to resonate and then to live with the holy that is already. If you human beings will slow down your urges to create materially, you will remember the sacred ways. 
So it goes on. And one of the things that I thought was important that I see in this chapter is it talks about learning how to walk in balance again. It talks about our song will awaken your memories and will bring healing to you. These are the whale songs. And that human beings have seven major roles as earth guardians. All of these tasks are important for this walk in balance. The gift of song, the gift of sight and vision, the gift of action, the gift of choice, the gift of creation, the gift of sacrifice, the gift of your connection to creator, and the gift of starry nature. And they ask us to stand as guardians of Mother Earth. So I, I didn't want to take too much time and read the whole thing, but I thought those were the key points that the whales wanted to bring through today. Yeah, and there's also, you know, there's, there's a lot in that teaching and that message. And one of the things that really stands out for me in, in their, um, their, their call to action for our sacred responsibility is the thing that they say is to think and feel fully before mm. making a change. And so they bring up how, um, you know, our choice is so powerful that it affects now and it affects the next seven generations. So if we're not thinking and feeling fully, you know, are we really considering what the change we're about to make, you know, and how that will affect seven generations from now? And a lot of what we're seeing in the world right now, just in terms of chaos and, you know, we're, we're seeing a complete dismantling of culture, dismantling of systems, you know, this, um, this whole lockdown mandate and all that other stuff that's going on right now, you know, people wanting to have medical sovereignty and freedom to choose, you know, we're, we're experiencing a challenge of being forced to, to take something that hasn't been tested and we don't know what the effects are of that in seven generations from now. Right. And that's a huge point to make that I myself on my personal journey right now in this month will be making that a primary part of my prayer is to bring balance into what could potentially become something really imbalanced for our children and the next seven generations because of what is being done on that level. And so, you know, I mean, it's just, it's so perfectly timed how, you know, spirit knows when to bring us what we need when we need it. And so like, mm -hmm. this is so perfect that we're having this conversation right now. And, um, you know, I just, I, I love that we're, we're here together, Michelle, because we've done this before in the past when we work together, when we experience a challenge, we just stop, drop and pray. And we yeah. know that when two or more gather that, you know, miracles can happen. And right now we need a miracle. And so I'm just holding yeah. that space. And, um, you know, and this is just, it just ties into so many things because, you know, we have to be doing the inner work, having the knowing, you know, to move forward with our wisdom and be in integrity because we have to be in our light right now. You know, we don't have a choice. We don't have time. So it's like, you know, get through your stuff, do the work, don't sit and dwell and, you know, ruminate for days and days and days, you know, get the help you need to get because we've got a big job to do and we're doing this together. And um, I know that you're helping a ton of people right yeah. now and, and same here, you know? And so I just thought, you know, we could talk a little bit more about some of the ways that we can move through this potentially really chaotic month because we're dealing with clearing and forgiving. <laughs> we're clearing karma this month, people. Yeah. And, you know, our choice is so powerful. And it, begin, it, it, begin, it begins with us. It begins with self-love and self-forgiveness. And I've been tasked uh, many times in, in, in this past two years to really focus on my own internal work that I, I, uh, I don't know anybody that's not going through something right now. And my heart goes out to every person that's dealing with challenges that may be bigger than mine. Um, but I don't want to minimize anyone else's challenges because 
as we go through these challenges, this is our work that we do. We work on ourselves first and then, then we help others, you know, but as we work on our, on ourselves, we are helping others. That is something really important to remember. And yeah, because as people we're sometimes will say, you, you know, we're healing ourselves, but we're healing the seven generations to come, but we're also healing the seven generations before us. We're healing our ancestors as well. And many of us already know that, but it's a good reminder that, I mean, we can clear a lot of stuff from our bloodlines and, and really open up some amazing um, beauty for our future. But go ahead, Michelle. I, I just feel like this is something that a lot of people will say, well, how do I work? How do I do that? How, how do I, how do I work on myself? And cause it's, it, it sounds like we just throw it out there. Like, oh, I'm doing my work. Well, what is doing your work? How, how can we give examples of doing our work? You know, and I can, I can say, um, you know, within relationship, like even just, even just this morning, my husband and I are going through some construction at our house and we're down to one bathroom, a teeny bathroom, the downstairs bathroom. And Jen, you know how small that bathroom is in my house. And um, we kind of got into it like a little crunchy situation dynamic. And we both just looked at each other and realized, look at how little and trivial this is, that this is, we don't have to argue about this. It's ridiculous. You know how, how, how we're trying to navigate this space. And so I think whenever we feel a trigger come up, one of the things that we can do is stop. Like you said, take, take three breaths, look at ourselves and how can we look at ourselves with lightness and humor rather than carrying the baggage that we're carrying with us? How do we clear those things out? And a lot of it has to do with, um, communication and self-reflection and looking at maybe calling on our ancestors and our guides to come in and show us the areas that we're working through in our subconscious, in our childhood, what things are we clearing or carrying with us that we don't even realize are, are walking with us? Are we, are we acting out of victimhood? You know, I see that a lot where, um, we feel like something's happening to us and we go into this, why is this happening to me? And, and, and in, in that victimhood place, and I'm not going to talk about all the areas where I've caught myself doing that. I'm just going to say that there are times that I have noticed that in my own essence and vibration, I go, oh my gosh, I just stepped into, into the victim role right now. And how do I get back into my power circle? How do I get back to feeling empowered and sovereign again? And, and it really has to do with standing in our power and claiming it and saying, I'm bigger than this. I'm finding my connection to source again, constantly. And chief always taught us about instantaneous forgiveness. That was one thing I remember his teaching was so strong about, you know, how do we get into when we're in some sort of victim mode to go into that instantaneous forgiveness, and then we feel it clear away. And I think that's a really good tool yeah. for us to focus. And you know, this is such a rich topic. And I know that so many people that have, you know, been been on their ascension path, of course, shadow work is a big part of your ascension process and journey and spiritual connection. And um, you know, my my spiritual awakening happened when um I got pregnant and I realized, you know, I've got to bring a child into this world. And this was 12 years ago. And you know, it's nothing like it is now back, back then it was, you know, scary, but I can't imagine what it must be like now becoming a new mom, but you know, I needed, he was my divine intervention and I needed to clean myself up quick, you know, because these kids are coming online and, and they need, you know, people that can hold a star child, you know? So, you know, I'll just share because there's sure. so many, there's so many things out there that can help us with our shadow work. And for me, mine was, um, you know, I was working in a mystery school and I was learning about ritual mastery. And that's what really introduced me to the shadow, which led me to a book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. And I read that book and I, I the first, it was like, you know, it's such a cliche to, thing to say, but like this book saved my life. You know, it just cracked open the door so wide for me to, and the one thing that I realized, like the one big, big standout from that 
because you said, you know, acting in victimhood, because that was so my channel that I was running all the time. But that book opened up the perspective to me that, you know, I'm the creator of my reality. And I wasn't taking personal responsibility over anything. I was out just blaming everything in the world, which really sustained my victimhood. So I had to turn that around and learning about responsibility and what it really is was such a huge pivotal point for me. And then I realized, well, if I'm creating strife and struggle and trauma and lack and scarcity and, you know, the whole gamut of being a victim, well, God dang it, I can still, I can create something really magical for myself. I can create abundance and prosperity. I can create joy and beauty. You know, I have the ability to do both. And so like, that was such a huge part of my awakening was really understanding, like I am a conscious creator of my reality. Um, so that is a great tool, you know, just to throw out some ideas for, you know, if people are searching for how do I do this work? Because ultimately it's really healing the wounded child. And, you know, it's going back into yes. time to those places when we experienced trauma as a child and we created a belief around that. And, you know, that, that belief became our shadow belief, you know, so really understanding what is your core shadow for me, mine is I'm not good enough. And also I, I don't do enough, you know? And so when I get triggered and I'm wounded and I go into victimhood, that's who's running me is the one, the, the child oh that's not good yep. enough. So what do I do? I go out there and I save the world. I create more work for myself. I become a workaholic. You know, I'm out there just and, and and not being able to do enough just fuels that even more. And before I know it, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so burnt out. I'm exhausted. I've lost who I am. You know, so this is how the shadow can really wreak havoc and sabotage our lives. But, you know, it takes a lot of courage to go back into those places we, you know, where we experience trauma to go in and heal it. But the beauty of it, of doing that is that we can turn from being disempowered to in becoming a very, very empowered person because we have the, it's uh, equal polarity, one or the other. So what are we going to choose? Let's choose empowerment. And so I love that. Yeah. You know, we're not immune. To I, I think, no. I think that's probably, that's probably why we re resonate so much with each other because, you know, in doing this type of work, I, I have come to realize that and working with I, I did a course called marriage alchemy and it's all about it's it's not so much about your marriage as it is about who you are within your marriage and what what's running the program so the first thing we do is leave blame behind and learn how to step into our power circle and into our sovereignty and and the other archetypes that are running that shadow there's so many, but it really, my husband and I have this whole new dialogue now about, you know, who's speaking right now. Is your saboteur <laughs> speaking or is your magician speaking? Is your victim speaking or is your warrior speaking? Is your child speaking or is your king or queen speaking? That's your sovereign, you know, is your lover speaking or is your prophet? Speaking, you know, there's the lover prostitute, the the victim warrior, the the child sovereign or king or queen, and then the saboteur or the magician. And I think, yeah, and those are those, so those primary archetypes give us a lot to look at and a lot to reflect yeah, and it, upon. Using those archetypes, it really depersonalizes it, so we can look at ourselves kind of separate from ourselves, which makes it a little easier to you know, really assess more objectively where we need to look and heal. And um, I just, I love that because yeah, for same, same for me, like, you know, we've learned how to communicate in a whole new language and learning how to hold each other where they are. And, you know, like yeah. if I see him triggered in his core shadow, I'm like, okay, so we're just going to breathe with some compassion through this and let that have its way a little bit, but also be able to support it to move to the other side of being empowered again. And, you know, we hardly argue ever mm -hmm. anymore and we can read each other in a moment's notice. And, you know, and, and it's so cool too, because I, I wanted to kind of draw this into like that high, the idea of telepathy, because the more we can clean up within ourselves, mm -hmm. the more telepathic we become. And 
this is such a great so point to make on so many levels because it's a great way to, you know, that, that is the language of love. So you can become completely telepathic with somebody that you're completely aligned with and resonate with and you're, you know, you know each other and you can hold each other in love no matter what. And, you know, here we are, we're in this age of disclosure and, you know, we're seeing star nations presenting themselves to us and becoming more visible so that that's a great mm -hmm. testament that a lot of us are doing the work because who wants to tell have a telepathic conversation with somebody that's pissed off at you you know right hearing, hearing all their anger and their blame and their judgment like it's already bad enough just feeling it but could you imagine hearing every thought that is going through somebody else's head and so like this that's is the, the point ascension. that's the point if we're telepathic yeah. Yeah. So no wonder we're not, one thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. One thing that you're bringing up reminded me of another workshop that I did with um, Harville and Helen Hendricks. Um, Finding the Love You Want is the name of their book. And I, I, we in 2020, I think it was January of 2020, we went to um, their workshop at Esalen. And one thing that really stuck with me was... Uh, um, how quickly you repair the rupture is the, the key to having successful relationships. Now in marriage, it's like when you have a rupture, when you're pissed off at each other, how quickly can you recover from that? But I think that extends over to every single relationship we have. I mean, I've had some struggles with my mother during this whole time. It's been challenging when, when you're res fully responsible for an elder parent who you're not living with, who you can't see. Um, where we have to maintain some semblance of heart connection and trying to uh, navigate our way through this space. And so there have been times where we have, you know, butted heads a little bit. And I know that a lot of families are going through that right now because of difference in beliefs and opinions. And I just really invite everyone to consider that love will lead us through this and to repair the rupture by not staying so stuck in our need to be right but just sharing that we can respect someone else's opinion because they're a sovereign being themselves. Mm -hmm. They have an opinion and we have an opinion. And what is at the core of that is respecting where each person is at rather than forcing our opinion down someone else's throat or, you know, wanting to strangle them, but I'm right. I'm right. And, and to just let that, let that part of that rightness pass I'm not going to give up what is my personal truth. I'm not going to hide it from anyone. Um, but I also, I also don't want to push people away because of um, being too forceful with my opinion. But we are at a very pivotal point right now in our soul's evolution and in our civilization's history and in our races. Our, our race's evolution. Do we want our race to expire or do we want to actually evolve and, and go through this ascension process where we're, we're repairing those rifts within ourselves, within our, our families, our communities, and the world around us. And coming back into right relation with Mother Earth is the key to getting through for those next seven generations and unifying. We talk about how important it is to be united and to unify. So celebrating our differences is something that's really crucial right now that we are going to be different and let's celebrate those differences because if we let them divide us, we're, where, where do we go from there if we're divided? If we're divided as a nation, if we're divided as a civilization, if we're divided as a family, it's not serving us. It's not. We've got to come into this unity consciousness. And it doesn't mean we all have to think the same way and have unity. It doesn't. We've seen that in our own circles, Jen. You and I have seen that where I can have a conversation with somebody and they're completely on the opposite side of the page with my, my personal belief system, but I can still be their friend and love them. And they can still be my friend and love me if they're willing to do that. But repairing the rupture is the first way that when we see a little crack or a rupture and what did chief do to repair ruptures? Whenever he saw energy going wonky at a conference, what did he do? Laughter. Yeah, always. <laughs> he cracked a joke. Oh, he made us laugh or yeah. he played a song. He, he had us come to the drum and pray. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. He was really, and he made it so easy and it worked every time and it works really fast. 
you know, so just that additional reminder about song and, you know, um, you know, that's such a rich topic because, you know, this, this whole need to be right is so tied to also needing to be liked and, you know, like just watching how social media has really um, created a, a kind of an avenue for division. And, you know, if you don't, if people aren't liking my stuff, there's something I'm doing wrong, or, you know, I better like this person's stuff. So I'm part of the tribe, you know, like it just is this weird tool that was introduced. And, um, you know, I just, I, I, I'm so glad I'm conscious of knowing that now because it's like, well, I can be okay with being wrong and I can be okay with not being liked by everybody, you know, because I, I can stand in my own oneness and, you know, unity can look so different. It doesn't have to, I, I had to really look at how I was thinking about unity and oneness. And, you know, oneness is really about being whole within yourself. And when you're whole within yourself, um, you have, that's what opens the door to unity because then, you know, it doesn't matter what you like or don't like what somebody else likes and doesn't like, you know, it's just, it's all in harmony. And, um, gosh, darn, I sure hope we get to see that really, really soon again, you know, just, or, not again, but see it, you know, just being able to be so accepting of everyone and everything by starting with ourselves. Yeah. And I like that you're bringing up social media because I think that's, there's another avenue that we can talk about with social media. When, when we read in the book from the whales about sacred responsibility, I have a lot of friends who are saying I'm getting off social media because there's so much fighting in social media. And I think we are being tasked right now to be responsible for our own energy. And I've had people tell me they don't like certain things they're seeing in their feed because they're, it, it just, it, it doesn't agree with their own belief or perspective. And I know I've been a little bit more bold about sharing some of the things I share and it triggers people. I'm not doing anything to trigger people and make them angry um, because my point of view may be different. What I feel my sacred responsibility is, is to bring awareness into people's hearts, let e letting each person make be their own captain of their own ship. You can take in this information and think it's wrong, or you can have an, an open mind and say, what, why does she have that belief system or why is she sharing that and go one step further to look for where this information is coming from. And another step further is why is it being censored? Why, why are we not seeing a balance? Like you're talking about balance. Why are we not seeing balance in our media? If we're only relying on like my mother, for example, only relies on what shows up on her TV her black box because she that's all she has she doesn't use a computer she doesn't use a cell phone all she's relying upon is the the information being fed to her brain through the black box which you know i don't even like to use the term mainstream media because you know that makes a connotation in itself but we i think it's really really important for us to ask those questions about where the balanced perspectives are. There's, there's many people on another side of this equation, um, finding other resources to do their, do their own digging into another side to an equation, because we're only being shown one equation. And if that's the case, why, why? our voices being silenced, especially, you know, like 17,000 doctors. I think it's important for people to look up you using DuckDuckGo and not Google. But if you use DuckDuckGo and you search under the keyword rumble or bit shoot for videos that are outside of, you know, the other um, high tech companies that produce videos, and you, you search on the Barrington Declaration and you see that there's 17,000 doctors that have come together to give a perspective that goes against what we're hearing from, you know, the people we're supposed to trust. I think it, this comes back to trusting ourselves and feeling into that wisdom, taking back the knowledge that's innate inside of each one of us and going with that. And I, I, and I don't want to offend. Yeah. 
Yeah, it ties Say in, that again. It, it ties into the knowing that we've been talking about because you feel yeah. it. You feel it. Yes. It doesn't yes. need words. You just know. Yeah. So right. yeah. Um gosh, I but we have to remember that. But before we can before we can apply that tool, we have to call that forward. And it's it's you know, it's simple to connect. Feel, feel ourselves connected with source energy, see that light coming through us, anchoring it within our hearts and asking, asking for guidance, asking, you know, recently, Jen, I think you know this, and I've talked about this on several programs, including my own Awakening Code Radio program, that I went through a really, really um, dark time, you know, sad time where I felt my spirit leaving. I felt myself saying, I don't want to be a part of this SHIT show. <laughs> um, and I really had to sit with that and say, do I really, am I really ready to leave my, my earth suit? Am I really ready to do that? Cause I feel like I came here with a mission, a divine mission to help be a bridge to help be a bridge and to help nurture and hold and help lead people back to their divine knowing, not giving their power over to anyone, no guru, you know, guru, G U R U <laughs> bringing, bringing your knowledge back into your heart and your own awareness. And I ended up saying, um, I ended up really, you know, coming back into that, asking the universe to place me at the, in the right at the right place, at the right time, with the right people for the right reasons, so I can live and serve my divine mission on earth for the greatest good for all life, not just my life, for, but for all life. And once I started saying that prayer again, I had, I had stopped saying that prayer for a while because I sank into my own victim consciousness, my own despair and overwatching, you know, being so empathetic to feeling all the, the heaviness and the suffering on earth. And once I started saying that prayer again, my whole world shifted in the, in the, in the blink of an eye. And it opened me up to doing things with people like you and people like, you know, I just did something with Scott Katamas and um, um, a few other men, two other men um, that's going to air on 222. I'll start, I'll share that on my social media. Um, and all sorts of things, avenues opening up, you know, Disclosure Fest, the festival coming into Los Angeles and being in person again with people and, and sharing beautiful music with people and yoga and art and all these things that bring us back into our magic by just saying a simple prayer and reconnecting with source. Really, that's what it takes to remember. If we feel alone, it's time for us to ask for help. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm getting the firings off too, because I can totally relate to your story, you know, just about reaching that point of like, I'm ready to tap out. I'm done. I can't do the skin suit thing anymore. And it's happened to me twice. And the first time, um, you know, I, I was literally on my bed, just crying, asking God, just come get me now. I am done and complete despair, you know, just, I mean, the utter most disgusting low I've ever been in my life. Right. And I finally took one breath and I released and surrendered and God came to me and saved me. And so yeah. I had this divine guidance, like it was a, a spiritual reset and it happened again, actually recently, because, you know, with so much going on after chief golden light Eagle, whom I've been working with for 11 years. Um, you know, he, I, I've considered him a father, a grandfather, a brother, uncle, he's, you know, my chief, um, my friend you know, and he, he dropped his robe in July. And so much happened after that, that I just did not understand at all, you know, just, um, so much wounding that was playing out and projecting and, you know, just, and then my own grief, my own loss and, you know, my own questioning of like, where does this leave me now with not only, you know, teaching, but also my Sundance and, you know, like my family, this is our way of life. I mean, everything just suddenly was like, 
you know, completely turned on its head. And I reached that same point again. I was just like, I'm fucking done. Take me. And the same thing. I just went into that total surrender. And that's when the divine guidance came in and everything shifted. And I got my confidence back. I got my, you know, I got my clarity around my mission and it looks different now. I feel supported and strong. I have a soul of stamina now. Um, Doors are flying open for me for new opportunities. Um, I'm getting, you know, an opportunity to build a community, which is a city of light that, you know, we're all wanting community to be able to live together and and be sustainable off the grid or whatever, you know, to be in our like-minded communities. But anyway, I just, I wanted to share that too, because like when you're going through a dark night of the soul, um, it can be gruesome. It can be just horrific but there's always a light. And we usually don't, we usually don't share when we're in it, when we're in it. Oh yeah. (laughs) We are not, we're not sharing it on social media. We're not, we're usually just very, you know, contracted instead of expanded. We're really contracted. And I definitely, um, definitely have gone through that at several different points, you know, and wondered, is this my exit? Is this my exit point? Is this what I want? Um, and, and it does come back around to reconnecting with that source consciousness. And um, the other thing that c- comes through is how are we going to act or be if we let go of all of our fears? If it, we, we have to ask ourselves, if we were truly fearless, how would we be any, di- how would we be different? Can we act from that space of fear? fearlessness. And that's what I think is emboldening each one of us. We're feeling that, you know, for you, Jen, that mama bear rising up inside of you because your child needs you to be that for him. And, you know, I, I recently met a woman who, oh my gosh, her name is Renette, R-E-I-N-E-T-T-E, Senem. She was the mayor of Nevada City in California, and she has an ex- extraordinary story about crossing Alaska by herself in 1994 and learning about her great grandfather doing it 100 years prior to that. And she was adopted, so she didn't know this man. And there's a lot of synchronicity in these stories. But she's running for governor of California, not as one party or another, but as a Californian. And this resonated so strongly with me when I heard that, that she's not running for either party and she's running as a, as, as a Californian and on her website, electronet.com, it says waking the bear. Think about California. The state flag is the bear. Yes. We're not talking about the bear moon right now. Yeah, We're talking I love about it. The bear. But <laughs> when I saw that on her website, waking the bear, I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. So we're going to have her on awakening code radio, not as a political, not as a political conversation, but her platform is the seventh generation principles. How simple is that? If we go back to the seventh generation principles and, you know, move all this minutia out of our way when it comes to politics, um, so anyway, I, I can't say enough about her. I, I love her and she feels like a, another sister and family. And I made a commitment to myself that every phone call um, that I make from this point forward, I'll drop her name if I haven't dropped it before, just so people can find out about her platform. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not attached I'm to where here people... from Colorado. I mean, that's, not, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to her. She's, I think. <laughs> I think she's, she's powerful. She's fearless. Oh, she's fearless. Like well, she's like a total yeah. badass. <laughs> she oh is. She's a total badass. Seriously, <laughs> not afraid. Well, let me know when that show's going to air because I want to listen. Um, but, you know, we're coming up to, I think, close to an hour talking here today. And I know we could just keep going on and on and on. And it's already been so incredibly rich and informative and you know, we're weaving some really amazing magic together on so many different topics. And so Michelle, share with us where people can continue to follow you and what you're doing. Well, um, yeah, I'm not really using a website because 
that I don't, I don't spend a lot of my time doing that. I just, I just want to um, invite people to find me on Awakening Code Radio on kxfmradio.org. We're on every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. live Pacific time. We're podcasted on all the podcast platforms. We have been on the air since 2012. I'm also one of the producers of DisclosureFest.org. Go there and find out about all of our outreach for feeding the homeless, helping, helping the starseed children, planting trees, cleaning up trash from the oceans, rivers, and, and all the waterways. Um, and this mass meditation initiative on June 18th, I'm putting a lot of my energy there. Uh, find me with Portal to Ascension. Portal to Ascension um, does a lot of online conferences. Our next in-person conference will be in April, April of 2023. Um, what else? Uh, I've been working a lot with um, Scott Katamis and um, the Global Peace Tribe. I've been working with Larissa Stowe with uh, the Weevolution she's doing, Larissa Stowe and the Shakti tribe. But on Instagram, I'm Michelle Two Hearts and same with on Facebook. And um, just, you know, I just invite people to connect. I, I post on my Instagram usually every week about the shows that we're doing on Awakening Code Radio. So that's how you find you, me. you know you're just you're like wonder woman to me you know you're you're doing so many different things and they're all i mean it couldn't be more of what we want to see in all of us in the future which is in service to all and you know that's just such a brilliant and beautiful gift that you bring that you support all these initiatives and programs and other you know people on their mission and you just are amazing space and heart holder for so many and i just love you and i really really enjoyed our conversation today um you are a big supporter for me following my path with um you know launching this channel moons of ascension um, so it's, it's just been an honor to have you here with me today and an honor to call you my friend. And I wanted to just kind of like wrap things up um, with a little bit of, I don't know, for some reason, the sun song is wanting to come through because mm. there's such this amazing connection with the whales and the sun. And the sun is an amazing healer for us because we can, you know, you work with the sun, you know, connect with the sun. It's the first food of our day. Um, that's where we send our yes. prayers to when we sun dance. That's the home of our ancestors. You know, so any answer that we ever could have or any, any question that we have can be answered by connecting and praying with the sun. And it's also a way to bring more um, healing to ourselves because the sun can, um, activate and heal our hypothalamus gland, which connects to our pituitary gland and pineal gland, you know, making us even more able to have telepathic, you know, gifts and all those fun things that we want to have. Um, but it also is the, you know, the hypothalamus is the master immunity gland. And so what you know, like we all need to kind of like be conscious of our own immune systems and do what we can to stay bright and healthy and helpful um, on that service to all level. So I thought, what do you feel about me singing the sun song as we end our call today? Is, is, are you singing a sun song? I can. Is that what I am so glad you brought that up because telepathically I was thinking about my friend Freedom, who's you know part of freedomtribenation.com, and he has a song called The Sun that I play a lot for our people. And I was like, is she gonna play Freedom song? And if you're not, I'd rather you sing yourself the sun song, but also I wanna encourage people to listen to freedomtribenation.com and find his song called the sun because one of the, the lyrics in there is I love you like the sun mm -hmm. and I love you Jen Berry Hill like the sun <laughs> I let you you I, I am your biggest cheerleader I love you so very much and I'm oh I'm so excited to watch you really land and step into your power and bring this forward for the world for the greater good for all this is such an important time and I also wanted to say I forgot one other thing this coming weekend February um 
what is it? What's this weekend? February. Fifth and I don't even know. It's the six, seventh, eighth, something like this is Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles in person. There will be a lot of speakers and a lot of soul family coming together in Los Angeles at Conscious Life Expo. So if you're in the LA area and you're watching this, just know that Conscious Life Expo is going on this weekend. I like to try to weave and connect all of these things, but thank you for the reminder of, oh, yeah. of our golden sun's presence. You know, <laughs> we are a golden sun's presence of such cosmic Christed light, you know, the coming down through us and out from us. And this is something to hold within us. So I love your singing voice and I can't wait to just <laughs> Well, that's so funny right because now. I've never considered myself a singer, but, um, you know, I, that's another part of me really stepping up into my, um, mission as well, but you can find me at edenarising.com, also starknowledge.org and on Facebook as Jennifer Crystal Eve. Um, I'm working on launching a new website and, um, also ready to be launched on telegram and, um, rumble and some of those other platforms as well. So, I'll put some links in the bottom of this video. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put up the symbol for the spiritual, or I'm sorry, the universal law of movement and balance. And, you know, just feel this song and connect with the symbol and connect with the sun and connect with the whale people and, and really invite that the healing of the emotional, physical, spiritual, um, what is it? physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual healing that is available with this symbol. So on that note, I'll play this or I'll sing this song for us and then we'll end our call today and cheers to everybody. Um, I love you all. Happy new moon. Thank Happy you. new moon. <laughs> Happy new moon. <laughs> Be good humans, as we like to say on Awakening Code Radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I love you. I'm going to put love this you up. Too. Okay. And then I'm going to take a breath. Um, and I'm going to grab some tobacco so that we can pray and then um, have our prayers be carried out um, to creator through this energy of tobacco. Thank you. And I want to thank all the beings of light who surrounded us today in this sacred heart space, sharing this message that I feel is so important for the rest of the world to hear and um, keeping your connection to your internet, internet strong so that this message travels far and wide. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, beautiful blue owl woman for your wisdom and your heart and your compassion and for all you're doing in service to the greatest good for all. I love you and I honor you and I respect you so much. Keep going, Jen. <laughs>
Thank you. I love you. <laughs> you got me choked up. <laughs> I know, I know. This was so amazing. I'm so glad we made the space for it. And you know, this new moon is a powerful new moon and you helped to remind me that no wonder why so much is pulsing for me in the month of, of uh, February. I forgot I'm also doing a conscious awakening program for it with Sheila Seppi of the Wish Alliance every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific so time. <laughs> <laughs> on Monday nights, I totally forgot. I'm feeling like, oh my gosh. Lots of energy and strength and just, you know, seeing you filled with so much love and um, just that beauty and strength that will, will be your fuel for what you're doing. Because what you're doing is so <laughs> massive. So massive. <laughs> all We're right. all doing it. You know, this, this is the Weevolution. So yes. thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I love all you. All right. Okay, take care. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Doksha. Right.